Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome this morning to Peace Through the Word, daily devotional piece of ministry of uh, Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation in Benson, Arizona, uh, in the United States of America. I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation, and so wonderful to welcome you on this December the 8th, 2023. Uh, to this daily devotional piece of ministry. And this morning, my brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking at the subject of Jesus is coming, Christ's coming. And some, and that's the whole purpose of Advent, is to prepare for Jesus' coming. And we're just not doing it. And so I'm going to really uh, pray that that, that will be a, a eye-opener, but also a, a point of inspiration, enlightenment, and genuine real peace. Uh, in Christ's coming. And then we're also going to be looking at what Jesus says uh, when he says, uh, your needs and Christ's riches. And so I pray that this will bless us tremendously uh, this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So allow me to please open our time together this morning with, <clears throat> with prayer. <clears throat> so stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So in the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices, and in the morning we prepare a sacrifice for you and we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, I'm going to share with you, first of all, from Dr. Martin Luther on Christ's coming. And he's going to use as the passage of Scripture, St. Luke chapter 21, verse 27. And in that, we have this recording. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. You see, when Jesus comes back again, it's not going to be anything close to like he came the first time. There's no more manger, no more gentleness, no more, you know, uh, you know, peace, you know, all that fluffy stuff. He's coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming when people will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. He's not coming as the humble baby Jesus, but he's coming to do business with a very sinful world. And if you're not trusting him, it's going to be the worst day of your life. It's going to scare the bejimis out of 99% of the people in all the world. It's going to be a tremendous day for those who are trusting Jesus, but the worst day of the, everybody else's life. Whole different story. So let's see how Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this for us this morning. Here power may again signify the hosts of angels, saints, and all creatures that will come with Christ to judgment. I believe that this is the correct interpretation. Or it may mean the power and strength that make this coming of Christ so much more powerful than the first, which was weaker and inferior. He says not only that he will come, but also that they shall see him come. At his birth he came also, but was seen by no one except he, the, you know, um, the shepherds. That was it. He comes now daily through the gospel, spiritually, into believing hearts. No one sees that either. That's true. And he comes to us through word and sacrament ministry. And no one sees that either. But this coming will be public. Every eye will see him. So that all must see him, as Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says, and every eye will see him. And they shall see that he is none other than the bodily man, Christ, in bodily form. And then everybody else will go, oh my goodness. Yeah. They're going to wish that they had done business with Jesus before, but now it's too late. The day of grace is no more. 
as he was born from Mary and walked on earth. But when he says that they will see the Son of Man, he clearly indicates that it will be a bodily coming, a bodily seeing in bodily form, yet in great power, with the great host of angels in all glory. He will sit on a bright cloud and the saints with him. The scriptures speak much of that day, and everything is pointed to it. And we are rapidly, and I emphasize the word rapidly, approaching that day. So, what's the message for us? Get ready, be prepared. That's the whole purpose of Advent. So I pray that this will maybe startle you a little bit, in a good sense, but enlighten you, inspire you, and then give you genuine real peace by simply putting your trust in Jesus Christ. And then Jesus reminds us again. He says that your needs and my riches are perfect fit. I never meant for you to be self-sufficient, trusting in yourself. That's never his prescription. Instead, he says, I designed you to need me, not only for daily bread, but also for fulfillment of deep yearnings. I carefully crafted your longings and feelings of incompleteness to point you to me. Therefore, do not try to bury or deny these feelings. Beware also of trying to pacify these longers, longings with lesser goods, people, possessions, and power. And that's what Americans, you know, try to uh, fill their lives with. Come to me in all of your neediness, with defenses down and with the desire to be blessed. As you spend time in my presence, your deepest longings are fulfilled. Rejoice in your neediness, which enables you to find intimate completion in me. <laughs> and that's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. It's all about Jesus and not us. So I pray that will bless you. So we profess the Christian faith and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. So together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin and our lives sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil that all of our doings and life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, again, thank you so very, very much for chiming in this morning to Peace Through the Word. Really pray that you've been inspired, enlightened, and given genuine real peace today as you end your week. And I pray that you will take some time to really prepare yourself during this tremendous, wonderful season of the church year of Advent and uh, for Jesus' coming. 
And I pray that that will change your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Beautiful day here in southern Arizona of Cochise County in the United States. Pray it's a beautiful day wherever you might be. And uh, so I convey all of our Lord's blessings to each and every one of you in abundance and wish you all tremendous blue skies. <laughs>